today I'm going to be teaching you to use power risers. First things first, when you put them on, make sure the buckles are on the outside. Next, make sure you have some type of padding. The minimum that I'm going to recommend is elbow pads and helmet. What are optional are knee pads and wrist guards. Now, when you first try to stand, you're going to want something you can sit on so that your knees are fairly level with your hips. That way when you stand, it's much easier for you to stand up on your own. Now when you do, I recommend you're standing next to something fairly tall that you can latch onto. That way instead of, and make sure it's not walking distance away, you're going to want it to be right next to you. That way you're able to move each foot independently and get a feel for balance. Okay, once you feel confident enough standing on your own and you don't need to hold on to anything to stand up, you're going to want to attempt walking. Now you're going to make sure you're going to want to make sure this is a short distance and that you're not really overstepping your bounds. Plus you're going to want something in the distance that you can latch, latch onto. This way once you get over there, you're not standing on your own. You're also going to want someone to walk with you. That way if you fall, you have somebody to help you get back up. Now we'll be covering how to stand up on your own without anyone there. So don't fret if you're not going to be able to walk with you. Alright, now I'm going to be covering actually how to stand up after falling when there's no one around to help you and you don't have anything to help yourself up with. Now i got to fall. Okay. First thing you want to do, place one leg out in front of you. Get one leg, prop yourself up on, your, on the knee of your back leg. Now this is going to have to be one swift motion. So you prop yourself back up on this spring and push yourself onto this leg. I warn you, this is probably the hardest thing to do in these, so you're not going to get it your first try. Now, here we go. And there you have it. Alright, here I'm going to be covering running. It's pretty much the same as walking, but you're going, to sh you're going to want to shift your weight forward and make sure your ankles keep straight. If you try to move your ankles while running, it's going to cause a lot of pain. So make sure you cover that. And we move from this tree to the next one. Make sure you keep your strides long. If your strides aren't long enough, you're going to fall flat on your face. And for the most part, that's running. Okay, after having mastered the other three steps, you're going to want to try jumping. Now, it's a little bit more complicated, so I recommend you get a lot of experience on them before you even, try, before you even attempt this. Now you want to start out on one leg, which is a basic hop. Once you've gotten this, put to two. Once on two, and you've gotten yourself fairly level, it's just like bouncing on a trampoline. Now then, if you feel fairly comfortable with this, and I mean having tried it more than once, you could try 360, which is done by simply just shifting your weight to the right or the left, quickly. 